We have a lot of dentists reaching out to us to help them drive more new patients. They want to build a new website, they want to do SEO, they want to try Google AdWords, they want to do social media, they want to try all kinds of things to try to increase their patient count. The funny thing is, however, the majority of results we get for our dentists has absolutely nothing to do with marketing at all. Most of the results we get are actually from finding and fixing internal issues in the practice. In today's video, I'm going to show you a behind the scenes look of exactly how we do that, what data we track, how we use that data, and how we improve the results for our dentists without spending a single penny more on marketing. Stick around. Hi, I'm Nick from RevUp Dental, the company that helps dentists get more new patients, grow their practice, and beat their competition. In today's video, we're going to take a behind the scenes look at a system that we've built called the scorecard that tracks what is happening with patient communication at the practice day to day. I'm going to show you how we use this information to drive a lot more new patients, 20, 30, 40% increase in a year without spending any more money on marketing. In fact, we're often able to help our dentists spend a lot less money on marketing. So let's jump into my computer and we'll take a look at how that system works. So what you're looking at here is our scorecard report. Now I've exported this as a PDF so I could redact and black out all of the personal information in here to not violate HIPAA. Normally this information is in a dashboard and a client can log in and look at it. But in this case, I wanted to show you a real client, an actual real example, not just a bunch of demo data like a lot of companies do. This is a real report from an actual client and what results we got for them in the month of December. Now, one of the first things we started to track is how many reviews a practice has on Google. Google reviews are the gold standard of reviews on the internet. Most people looking for a new dentist are just going to go to whichever dentist has the best and most reviews. I mean, wouldn't you? We would tell this to all the dentists and the staff and they would listen and they would nod their head in agreement and yet nothing would happen. Nobody did anything different. It wasn't until we started reporting on how many reviews the practice had and how many reviews their competitors had that we actually started to see things improve. In fact, one of the most common excuses we kept hearing from all dental staff was that they were asking for reviews, that they were asking every patient. We were a bit confused, so we started looking into it, trying to figure out what was going on, only to find out that when we looked into the system, the staff hadn't logged into the system in months. They weren't sending any reviews or any requests at all. We showed this to the dentist and the staff felt like we had got them with their pants down. So moving forward, we started to track how many review requests were actually being sent out each month so we could create a strong system of accountability. Unsurprisingly, once we did that, things started to improve. And now this dentist is the highest rated dentist in their area and they've won numerous awards like Reader's Choice Award, Three Best Rated Award, and they've seen a lot more new patients come in because of it. The next most important thing that we track is the cost to acquire a new patient. I am still completely shocked to this day how more than 95% of dentists that I speak with have absolutely no idea what it's costing them in marketing to acquire one new patient. They just splash money around on all kinds of random marketing activities like SEO, social media, flyers, promotions, all kinds of silly things. And when I sit down with them and I ask, what is the ROI on this? How many patients is this actually bringing in? How much money is this actually making you? They just sit there like deer in headlights because they have absolutely no idea. The best thing they have to show for it is usually a report their marketing company sent them about how many website clicks they got or how many Facebook likes they got or metrics that have about as much value as monopoly money. You can't pay your office rent with Facebook likes. You can't pay your staff at a dental practice with website clicks. That's not a currency. If you're spending money on marketing, then you need to be able to clearly see how many patients this is actually bringing in. And you also need to validate if those patients are actually coming in as a direct result of the marketing, not because they were referred by somebody or maybe they just walked by your practice and they saw your sign. Those people would have come in anyways, even if you weren't doing any marketing at all. So it wasn't the marketing that made it happen. A lot of dental practices don't operate based on data. They operate based on feelings. 
if they notice a few new people coming in that week, then they feel that what they're doing is working. They have no idea where those patients are coming from or if they found the practice as a direct result of the marketing. If they have a bad week and there's some holes in the schedule, then they feel that things aren't working and they feel they need to try to do something different. Now, this management by feelings is why a lot of dentists never achieve more than average results. So in our system, we track how much money the dentist has given us to do marketing. This includes website, SEO, Google AdWords, management, uh, content photos, you know, the whole shebang. It also includes how much money they spent on Google AdWords or social media or flyers or, or whatever. In this particular case, we only spent a little over $30 on Google AdWords because we did so well with their SEO and Google reviews that they had such strong rankings, they really didn't need to put any more money into marketing. As a result, we were able to generate 39 new patient leads. Now, these 39 leads were patients who on the phone indicated to us that they found us on Google by doing a search uh, for a dentist in their area. Or they filled out a request and appointment form and on the website they were asked, how did you find the practice? And they were presented with many options like, uh, I'm a referral, I live in the area, I saw your sign, etc. And they self-selected that they found us on Google. So these 39 new patient leads came in as a direct result of the marketing investment. So essentially, we've spent an average of $39.03 to get one new patient who had never been there before and found us on Google to call the practice. Now of these, the staff were able to successfully secure 22 patients for a booked appointment. So when you look at the total marketing spend that the dentist invested in both RevUp Dental and Google AdWords, we were able to acquire patients for $69.19 on average. Patients who found us as a direct result of the marketing, patients who came in and actually paid for treatment. On average, from what we've seen for dentists in North America, most dentists are spending around $400 to $500 to acquire a new patient when you factor in all the things that they're spending money on for marketing, like building and hosting their website, social media, SEO, etc. When we began working with this particular practice, it was also costing us around two to $300 initially to get them one new patient. In our booking rate section, we give a breakdown of what happened with different types of calls and communication. So for example, we track what happened with all the new patient leads and how many were booked. In this case, the practice was able to secure 56% of new patient leads into appointments, which is pretty good given that when we first started working with them, the average was around 25 to 35% each month. It used to take three to four new patients calling before one was booked in for an appointment. And now if two people call, they're almost always able to secure at least one of them for an appointment. Once you start tracking the right data, the staff and the numbers tend to improve. We also had 40 existing patients reach out for an appointment and of those, 31 were successfully booked. We had 30 patients called to cancel their appointment and 10 were successfully rebooked. Now normally this number is higher, but uh, we are in a pandemic right now. Now out of 208 total phone calls coming in, 20 went to voicemail and 30 calls were not answered. Out of all the appointment calls coming in this month for both new and existing patients, the staff were able to secure 76% of them into appointments. Now of all the people filling out the request appointment form on the website, only 40% were booked into an appointment. Nobody contacted the business through the general form on the contact page to ask a question this month. And out of 229 total patient communications, both through email and phone that happened in December, we found 20 where there was an opportunity to book an appointment, but it was kind of left in limbo. What this means is sometimes a patient says, you know, I'm not really sure if I can come in Wednesday, let me check my schedule and get back to you. But they forgot to call back and the staff forgot to call back as well, so nobody ever follows up with the patient. And these types of patients tend to just slip through the cracks. So we highlight this so that we can work on improving it and getting the staff to be more proactive about reaching back to patients as in many of these situations, you can usually secure the appointment. Now where this information is very powerful is when you look at average trends for other dental practices across North America. So for example, that 40% conversion rate on the requests and appointment forms, it immediately caught our attention because across all of our other clients, 
most of those forms convert at about 75 to 90 percent. A patient would have to answer about 20 to 30 questions to request that appointment. So if somebody's spending five minutes to fill out that form, then they're probably pretty serious about requesting an appointment. When we started investigating this further, we found that it was taking the staff between three to five days to get back to these requests. So by that point, this patient had already found another dentist to go to. As soon as we brought this to the attention of the dentist and the staff, though, the conversion rate pretty much doubled overnight and the staff started to respond to these requests right away. We look at things like what people are actually calling in about and what dental services are actually popular in that area. Uh, we take a look at when calls are coming in and make sure that there is enough staff to handle the volume at certain days of the week. But most importantly, and the true bread and butter of this system, is listening to and making sense of every single communication coming in. We look at who calls, when they call, what their name is, what they're looking for, if they're a new patient or an existing patient, which staff member spoke to them, what was said on that call, and what was the end result? Were we able to secure that appointment or not? And if not, then what went wrong and how can we improve moving forward? It's a monumental amount of work, but it's critical to figuring out where the bottlenecks are at a dental practice. Here's a particular situation where we had a patient complaint. This patient called on December 8th at 3.59 p.m. and she was frustrated that she had not been informed that there were other options for sedation other than nitrous. Now she mentioned the receptionist that she spoke with was rude on the phone and that she hung up on her, but the office manager in this case did a great job and listened to the patient, uh, was building rapport, she calmly explained all the different sedation options the practice offered, and she really sold the sizzle of the practice and how they have an amazing dentist at this office. And in the end, she was able to secure the appointment with that patient. There's a lot that happens in a dental office day to day, and no matter how amazing your team is, no matter how amazing your office manager is, they cannot possibly catch every problem or be on top of every little thing that goes on every day. There's a lot that falls through the cracks, unfortunately. And this is where we come in to help and make sure that the practice continues to operate at that high level of customer service. We go through every communication that happens in an office and we look at how the calls are handled, we look at where the problems are, we work with the team to fix them. Sometimes this includes a bit of training on customer service or how to deal with common questions that come up like people asking, you know, how much do you charge for this or the other thing? And a lot of the improvements come from being able to catch problems before they actually happen and before they sort of get lost in the shuffle day to day. So the moral of the story is sometimes to get more new patients, you don't need to be doing marketing. Often the problem tends to be on the internal side of the business. And, you know, unfortunately in dentistry, there just aren't a lot of tools out there to help you sort of manage the practice day to day. I hope you found this video useful. Again, my name is Nick, and if you wanna see more videos like this one, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, or you can always check us out at revupdental.com. Thanks for watching.